Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Friday the 15th of April. Now, cases are going down globally, and I've prepared some material on that. But first, I want to look at um, the United States, where cases are going up, particularly in the New York area, New York State and New York City. Now, we had expected a BA2 bounce in the States. We've been looking at this for some time. But now the uh, New York health authorities have identified some sub-variants of BA2, which are more transmissible. Let's look at the site, the source for this. This is the site here. So that's available with references. And it really is quite noticeable the way that the quality and the quantity of genomic sequencing has increased, even in the past few weeks in the States. But let's dive straight into the detail on this. New York State Department of Health Emergency of recently identified highly contagious Omicron subvariants in New York City. Now, these are subvariants of BA2. This is not the recombination variant that we looked at in the UK, which was a recombination of BA1 and BA2 when one individual was infected by both types of uh, virus at the same time. These are evolutions, if you like, of BA2. Two. So it's a slightly different situation. Uh, so this is the Wadsworth Centre where there's doing a lot of this sequencing now. So sub-lineages of BA2. Now the first one is BA2.12 and this has got a 23% growth advantage above the original BA2 variant and the BA2.12.1 27% growth advantage above the original variant. Now these growth advantages are significant, therefore I would expect them to become the predominant variant. Now, the degree to which these also have immune escape, we don't know. But because they're Omicron, we know that they'll have immune escape over people that have been vaccinated, people that have been infected with the original Wuhan strain, the Alpha strain, the Delta strain. They'll have immune escape to that. But whether they've got more immune escape than BA2, there's no evidence that they have yet. They just seem more transmissible. Therefore, they will, presumably, we, we believe these will, will take over. These are big growth advantages over the original BA2. And the New York uh, authorities are saying potentially contributing to increased transmission reported in central New York and surrounding regions. And I think that's being fairly uh, tentative. I think it's very probable that these are responsible for a big part of the bounce that we're seeing in New York at the moment. Um, am I particularly worried about this? No, not really. But th there is some detail to dig through. Um, so BA2, this paper said, this report said 80% of the infections in New York. Now, we know this is probably somewhat out of date now, but that's what it's saying. Now, during March, uh, the BA212 and the BA2121 <laughs> rose at 70% in prevalence in New York City. And for April, there's now an increase of uh, 90%. So they've increased really quite dramatically. So levels in central New York are above 90% of the new variants, meaning, of course, that this, is, uh, that this older data is, is now out of date. So the new variants accounting for 90% of sequence cases in New York. And um, they are increasing really quite dramatically in, in prevalence. Um, at this time, there is no evidence of increased disease severity by the subvariants. direct quote. So it's looking like there's no increase in disease severity. So this looks like basically, as far as most people are concerned, this is going to be just an other form of Omicron, which is actually going to increase the Omicron BA2 bounce in the States. It'll probably mean it'll happen quicker, it'll peak quicker, and hopefully it will go down quicker as well. And of course, we're expecting this to produce more Omicron immunity in the population. So you could argue that this is good because it's accelerating the spread of Omicron BA2 because it's these more contagious subvariants of BA2. Um, State Health Commissioner Dr Mary uh, Bassett, we are we are alerting the public to two Omicron subvariants newly emerged and rapidly spreading in upstate New York, so New Yorkers can act swiftly. Uh, so Dr. Bassett is advising people to get fully vaccinated and boosted, uh, is her advice. 
uh, of advising to test following exposure, symptoms or travel. Consider wearing a mask in public indoor spaces. Consult with your healthcare provider about treatment if you test positive is, is her uh, advice. I would just add to that that this is not going to be stoppable. The original Omicron was not, not stoppable. That was the BA1. The BA2 was even less stoppable. And now these sub-variants of BA2 are going to be even harder to stop because they are so incredibly transmissible. It is amazing how this virus has evolved to become so much more transmissible is now incredibly, incredibly quickly contagious. Um, also, the official advice, if COVID positive, stay at home and consult with a healthcare provider about treatments. Of course, always consult with a healthcare provider. Absolutely. Improve ventilation or gather outdoors makes perfect sense. Of course, we've been talking about ventilation on this channel for a long, long time now. New Yorkers who are not vaccinated or up to date with vaccinations are increased risk of developing severe disease. So people that aren't vaccinated at all are at increased risk of developing severe disease. We, Of course, this is true. Um, but of course, the problem here is differentiation between people that have had natural immunity uh, and people that are vaccinated. But if someone's naive to the virus, if they haven't had previous infection, and if they're not vaccinated, then they are at risk of severe disease, even although the risk with Omicron is much less. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Christian St. George, New York virologist who works with this, he works with these uh, Department of Health groupings in uh, in New York. Uh, BA2, uh, BA2.12 and uh, 2.121 is also in 40 other countries. Now, tantalisingly, we don't know what these are yet, um, but we're pretty sure it's in the UK. I mean, if you look at the amount of flights that are going from uh, JFK to, to Heathrow all the time, if it's in New York, it's got to be in, in the UK as well and other major uh, ma major cities. It doesn't matter how much you test, it's still going to get through. Um, it's so we know it's spread to other countries and 30 states across the United States. Therefore, I'm expecting these sub-variants to become the dominant form of BA2 Omicron in the world because of the 25, 26% growth advantage. And if we actually look at the cases in New York at the moment, uh, so uh, 24 hours average, 20, so every day, average for the past seven days, over 2,000 new cases. That's up 60% over the past 14 days, but we're pleased to see that deaths are still down over the past 14 days, which is good. And the United States generally, cases are up 22%. Now, this is presumably Omicron BA2 here, which um, is causing these increases in, state, uh, in cases in the States generally. But the new sub-variants of BA2 causing this 60% increase uh, in this case in New York City. So I think that shows us the increased transmissibility, at least to some extent, between the original Omicrons, the BA1 and the BA2. BA2, of course, now predominating in the States. But this is the growth advantage of the new sub-variants of BA2. These have a significant growth advantage and as we said, are becoming prevalent. But deaths in the United States down 27%. Uh, still not gone away, but, but down to what they were. Hospitalizations down 13%. So it's looking like these new variants are going to be highly transmissible. Um, they're going to take over. They're going to become globally predominant. So the, the, the BA2.12 and the BA2.12.1. <laughs> Um, but so far, they're not causing more severe disease, um, hospitalizations and deaths. And I would expect this to continue because even although these are subvariants, the, the mutations here are mostly affecting the spike proteins, the way it's actually getting into the cells. The majority of the genome is the same. So I'm expecting preserved cross immunity from BA1 Omicron to BA2 Omicron to, to these subvariants of BA2. I'm expecting people that have been infected with these original Omicrons to have minimal or uh, ace, hopefully most cases asymptomatic infection if they are reinfected with these. But most people are not expecting to be reinfected. The, the Omicron um, immunity should apply mostly to the other Omicron variants but of course people infected with the earlier variants they will get the breakthrough infection this is the problem 
the good news is that the vaccines and previous infections so if you've been vaccinated, you've still got some protection from severe disease, although that's waning now quite rapidly, as we know. But if you've been infected with the Wuhan strain, the Alpha strain or the Delta strain, that's still going to give protection against severe disease and hospitalisation for these new Omicron strains, but not against symptomatic infection. So this could mean more rapidly in spreading uh, symptomatic infections. I'm hopeful that we're not going to see dramatic changes in uh, things like this, the deaths which are down, the deaths and hospitalizations which are down globally, or globally across the United States. But because there's going to be so much of it, uh, there will be a proportion of increased uh, hospitalizations and deaths, but hopefully fairly small. But this is because there's going to be such a high prevalence of this. So is this confirming the BA2 bounce that we predicted for the states? Yes, I believe it is. Is it taking the form that we expected? Well, no, we expected the original BA2 to carry on. But the BA2 has now evolved into these more contagious sublineages of BA2. And they will cause a, a BA2, albeit a BA2 sublineage bounce in the United States. The upside of it is it's going to greatly increase the amount of people that are developing uh, immunity and resistance, which of course is, uh, is a good thing. So there we have it. Read it for yourself. It's, uh, it's all there. Um, new variants, BA2 bounce in the States. Most people, thankfully, will be getting, uh, sim well, symptomatic disease, mostly a fairly... Um, but fairly hopefully modest symptoms. But we, we do know that about 45% of people in the States or more, probably getting on for 50% of people in the States have already been infected by Omicron. So for them, hopefully this should be much less of a problem. Surprising the amount of scope this virus has for uh, mutating and evolving. And there's no reason to assume it will uh, stop, but it does seem to be evolving into more transmissible forms rather than more pathogenic forms, which of course is very good news. So uh, thank you for watching.